Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man Rock Force. In the last part we started off the game, and now that we got Tornado Man, we're gonna head after some more Robot Masters after we check out the shop. Auto Shop this time around has extra lives, E-Tanks, W-Tanks, and Spike Immunities, as well as the upgraded Energy Bouncer for 200. That, I believe, changes the Energy Bouncer so that Overflow will go to a new weapon, I think. Overall, it's just worth getting at the end of the day. And now it's time for us to head after Virus Man. My least favorite stage out of the main eight from my memory, and easily my least favorite boss out of the main eight. Now, as for Acid Man's bio, he's a disease containment robot and specializes in both human and robotic illnesses. Would have come in handy back in Mega Man 10. Since Wily has used robotic viruses multiple times in his attempts at world domination, Virus Man was built with a formidable immunity so he could work without worry of being infected himself. However, people have noticed that constant exposure to suffering disease have weighed on him, despite his seemingly sprightly demeanor. His system contains many strands of virulent data, including a bizarre robotic illness that reverses the movements of those it infects. The virus man was built to focus on one patient at a time, therefore he has trouble focusing on multiple targets. Hence why he's going to be weak to the charade clone. And that illness they talked about is a mechanic in this very stage. Most of the enemies, especially the robotic viruses, when you touch them, Mega Man will turn into this kind of very ill-looking green and greenish-blue color palette. And your controls get reversed, you can no longer charge your shots, and you can't access any special weapons. If that happens over a perilous jump, you're gonna be in danger, to say the least. Now, at the end of the last part, we also got Tornado Man. And Tornado Man's probably one of the most in-depth characters in the game. He can fire his little gyro attack from Mega Man 9 forward just by pressing the fire button, yeah. By holding up and firing, he uses a special weapon from 9 where he causes the tornadoes to do a little screen nuke on the screen, and it also allows him to jump higher if you jump while doing it. Uh, but it does have an ammo count to it. If you hold down and fire while in midair, you have a little tornado at your... Uh, he generates a little tornado at his feet. And if you mash the button... Uh, you can keep it up and continue your horizontal distance pretty good. It essentially becomes a little bit of a glide at um, ability. And it also allows you to bounce off of armored enemies like Metars. Now, something I should also mention, High W Tank, by the way, is that there's technically two weakness chains in this game. Uh, there's the normal one that I'm going along, which is just for the weapons. However, each Robot Master has a Rock Force weakness as well, where they're weak to a specific member of the Rock Force's attacks. For instance, Nightman, who we got back in part one, if you want to go along that order, you'd want to go after Charade Man as well, because he's also weak to Nightman. However, Tornado Man is the weakness of Circuit Man instead. So you'd be going along that order if you were doing that. I'll bring that up as we go as well. Gotta say though, I love this track. In fact, this game's soundtrack's really good. It's not quite as in my head as some of the other Mega Man tracks from over the years, just because not as much exposure to it compared to the mainline games yet, but it's really well done. I do know some songs got added in at later updates. In fact, this game's gotten quite a few updates uh, that one completely changed the ending, too, because uh, the original ending of this game was a little bit controversial due to things about it. And they change it to be more bittersweet and in line with the franchise itself. I'll talk about that more when we cross that bridge, though, in however many parts. The most annoying thing about this stage, though, to me, are these capsules here. Uh, when you break them, five little viruses uh, come out and circle around from their origin points. They're easy to kill because they only take one shot, but if you touch them, well, you get infected with the virus, and that means you're probably going to end up heading into the spikes just because of a reverse direction. Another annoying thing about it is very often I have trouble jumping out of them just because the ceiling is so close to me. Virus Man is a fun boss, but one I find extraordinarily annoying. Attack-wise, he can few, uh, put a few little worm things into the water below who will eventually jump up and just act as a little annoyance in the way. He can go all raffle copter and either go left to right, in which case he'll just go one direction and immediately reverse back to the body, or he'll go up and spew the little virus driblets out in a circle. Whenever he's cycling like that, he is completely immune to damage. However, it does leave him open to a charade clone if you just stand right where his legs are, because his legs don't have a hitbox at that point, if I recall correctly. 
This is easily one of the hardest bosses, I think, to do a perfect run of for a beat letter, so I don't recommend it. And even then, using his weakness against him because he can infect you with the illness is pretty annoying. I think the way they intend you to have it happen is that if you touch anything, you touch him with the charade clone, and then you don't get the illness. But, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Although, a little quirk with charade clone I forgot to mention. Uh, you can't use it while you're in your invincibility frames. Uh, be it ones from your getting hit, or the ones that happen immediately upon destroying the charade clone. So you're gonna want to keep that in mind. With that said, for beating him, we get one of my favorite abilities in the game, and probably one of the f my favorite shield-type weapons I've ever used in a Mega Man game at all. Uh, Viral Outbreak, I think it's called? And we also free Dive Man, who is my least favorite Rock Force member to play as. The Viral Outbreak, uh, the virus driblets just kind of circle around you, but if you press the button, they go, well, they, they, their circle grows and then shrinks back it's in. The ammo isn't used based off how many times you've used the shield, it's by how long you keep it out instead. And the good thing about that becomes it's very, it, it lasts a long time. It, not, nothing can destroy the shield outright. It's one of my favorite abilities, and it hits enemies pretty hard, too, because each little driblet is a separate hitbox. With that said, time for us to head after Pulse Man. Pulse Man is an experimental robot. He serves as a proof of concept rather than a truly practical robot, an idea he presents. He and several other machines were designed to do to do to work with a new hydrogen fuel system that was based off the cardiovascular system. Though the system earned the respect of the scientific community, plans to experiment further fell through, leaving Pulse Man and the self-sustaining machines alone in an abandoned factory. Though the unusual fluid is used to unpower, uh, though the unusual fluid used to power the machines is currently sterile, it's easily contaminated by foreign bodies. Hence, why he's weak to viral outbreak. I love this stage's color palette, by the way. I love this kind of color scheme. Dive Man is not a very fun robot master to fight. Uh, to play as in my eyes. Uh, he can just fire his standard missile attack forward, which is cool. But if you hold up while firing, it becomes a homing missile at the cost of some ammo. Additionally, also taking up some ammo, if you hold down in attack, uh, he charges forward, which is really good underwater, but it's very unwieldy out of it. Here we have a nice little gimmick. We have some teleporters, sort of like the ones right out of... Uh... Why can't I remember his name? Uh, Mega Man 9, Galaxy Man stage. You swap between the two blues and the two pinks, and each, uh, there's two sets of each in any given room they're in. Just leads to some plat some fun platforming. But it's time for a mini boss, and this mini boss is surprisingly easy. The top and bottom of the ladders are going to be covered in some damaged things, but the only two attacks this, uh, cannon, I guess, has is one large projectile or five small ones. If you position yourself so that Mega Man's feet or head are immediately above or below, respectively, the middle projectile, you won't get hit. And now we have to deal with wave physics. Great. These things are constantly pushing or pulling you along around spikes, and that's scary to me. However, this is where you can get a really good look at how a charade clone can really help making traverse stages much more safe, because you can take a death without taking a death. Of course, Charade Clone's ammo is fairly limited. I think it only has eight uses at most. But it's still very worth your time to use. It's why I recommend going after Charade Man as early as you can in the cycle, be it if he's your first or second Robot Master. The latest I'd say you should allow yourself to get Charade Clone is the third or fourth, because it's just that invaluable abil an ability in so many stages. I do, that's one thing I like about Mega Man fan games, is that, for the most part, they do a good job in making their abilities worthwhile to use, even outside of boss fights. Something that even Capcom struggled with every now and then. Don't get me wrong, uh, there's, each game still has its list, least used items, uh, weapons. But, compared to, say, Mega Man's 4, 5, and 6, even, there's not, a, a lot of these weapons can be used as a toolkit of sorts. Either way, time for Pulse Man. Pulse Man's gonna be jumping between the three altitudes in the room, from left to, from uh, right to middle to left to middle, so on and so forth. And each time he lands, he's going to generate a shockwave and then shoot out a couple different projectiles. His Pulse Stopper is gonna bounce around the room several times, or he'll just 
fires some various energy projectiles all over the place. Because of how quickly he gets damaged by Viral Outbreak, though, doesn't stand much of a chance. In fact, I'd argue he might be the easiest Robot Master with his weakness. And now we get to save Nitro Man. For beating Pulse Man, we're gonna get Pulse Stopper, which is a bit of an odd ability. It's shaped like a ring. And you just fire it forward. However, you can hold the D-pad in any direction to fire it in that direction, which is cool and all as well. However, it'll also stop most projectiles it hits, and you can also hold the button to keep it on you as a sort of semi-shield. And now it's time for us to head after Circuit Man, who probably has... Do I want to say this is my favorite stage out of the main eight? It very well could be, honestly. I love this stage. Music's great, too. Nitro Man's also a fairly in-depth character compared to the others. He can fire his wheel cutters, whatever they were called in Mega Man 10, forward. But you can also hold the fire button to keep them in front of him for a constant hitbox. Uh, you can also hold the button and hold the wheel up to a wall to rise up on the wall, just like you could with the weapon in Mega Man 10. You can hold up and fire to throw his wheels in an arc, and hold down and fire to enter his motorcycle form, in which case... Uh, not only can he slide along walls, but also allows him to access the slide passages. Ultimately, when it comes to the Rock Force themselves, I don't find them that worthwhile using in my time, just because I play Mega Man to play Mega Man, if that makes sense. It's like Powered Up, where they're a nice option, and they can be fun to play. Uh, two of them in particular I find really fun to play, but it's your mileage may vary, I guess is what I want to say here. I don't do it. They might be fun for you. Also, as for the weaknesses that I haven't covered yet, uh, Dive Man is strong against... Uh, Crypt Man, actually. Whereas Nitro Man is strong against Shock Man. This stage also gets a lot of good use out of the Crypt Cloak if you got it from Crypt Man stage. Which is one of the reasons, again, I recommend going after that stage first. Because while the boss is easy, the weapon is really useful in a lot of stages. It just makes some platforming a lot more easy. Now, something I also haven't quite gone over yet is that the bosses do have different patterns if you're playing on easy, normal, or hard. For instance, Charade Man, even in the mini-boss, on easy mode, he mimics Toad Man and then Gemini Man. And the blue ball he fires out. Uh, it's four bullets on normal, it's eight bullets in all eight directions on hard, and it's nothing in easy. Uh, I'll be going over those changes for each of the bosses from here on as well. Uh, for instance, Crypt Man, the biggest difference he get, I think, is that his slide attack uh, goes faster. I think he jumps lower as well on hard mode and has a third jump that sends out two shockwaves. And his teleportation, I think, is a bit faster. Pulse Man... I think it his attack speed's entirely the big thing that's changed. And yeah. And here we have another one of my favorite gimmicks. These light bulbs. When you shoot them, platforms alternate on and off. Again, this challenge is kind of mitigated by Crypt Cloak because, god, I love this weapon. But I find this just to be fun because you have to think out your platform before you jump. Like, for instance, I could have very easily died there if I wasn't paying attention. Which is something that's very easy to do in this game. Uh, I know the whole thing with Mega Man games, for a lot of people, is that they're easier on the second run through. Because not only do you know the stages and their gimmicks, but you know what to expect. This game is very much a champion of that. Because the first playthrough of this game is honestly a little bit rough. Just because you're dealing with so much... These stages aren't easy, uh, I just make them look it. I can say that for a fact. Mind you, I am playing on normal mode, so it could be harder, but, uh... I like to use my time for things beyond LPing sometimes, so I'd like to get it done within a feasible manner. Which is actually one of the main reasons that unless a game requires it for another ending piece, I tend to play mostly on normal modes in my games on this channel. This room is one of my favorites if you have abilities, just because you can really think out how you want to approach things. The level design in the mainline Mega Man games is usually good too, don't get me wrong. But sometimes the fans really do think out how to use the abilities in tandem with the level design better. And mind you, I'm saying that mostly for the late NES era. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> and maybe Super Nintendo? Because once they hit PlayStation, they got a bit better about that, and I shouldn't have done that. I have screwed myself. Uh, I can't do anything here, so I'm just going to cut after my death. You're supposed to hesitate for the first circuit to fall down. 
Admittedly, that happens to me a lot as well. Sometimes I'll just take stupid hits in this game or do dumb shit just because I'm impatient or I see something that's like, ooh, shiny. Either way, it's time for Circuit Man who's weak against the Pulse Stopper. Uh, Circuit Man almost always starts the fight with a jump, so keep that in mind. But beware as well, because he can also throw down some of his Circuit Breaker weapons while he's jumping like that. He does one halfway through and then one at the end. Otherwise, he has attacks involving the Circuit Blocks from the stage. If he throws it high, or if he jumps, he's going to throw it directly at you. But if he's low, he's going to throw it to the ground and then it'll just slide along. He can also do a left, right, and then both direction combo with the Circuit Breaker weapon, which I think he's about to do right now. Jump over the first, slide over the second, you should be fine there. For beating him, we get that Circuit Breaker, which fires that projectile in both directions. Not much ammo, but it's extraordinarily powerful. Uh, in fact, I'd argue that it and one other weapon are some of the most powerful weapons in the Mega Man series, just due to their pure damage alone. We also get to free Cut Man, who will, even though I'll go over him next part, uh, controls very similarly to Mega Man Powered Up. I think on easy mode, his attacks are just less often, and he doesn't have the direct block throw. And I think he jumps lower and is just generally faster on hard mode. And I cut away in that mid-fight because I took a hit, because that's also one of the easiest Robo Masters to get a perfect run on. So now I have the perfect B, uh, E parts. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part three... We're going to be taking on more Robot Masters. Honestly, there's not much you can really say about what's going to happen at this point in the Mega Man game, huh? <laughs> See you guys then.